how to make scroll stop portraits coming up. Hi, it's Danielle from Wendell Woodworks and I'm working on some portrait orders this week that I'd bring you along behind the scenes to see my process and hopefully encourage you on how you can make your very own. Step one is to find and print your picture. And I always print two copies. I'll show you why later. Though it's not a necessity, I find it much easier to remove the background before beginning, and I do this through Canva. You may have a different software or program that you can do this with. Next, I'll print it to size, and I'll tape it together to form my template. Step two is the marking of your cut lines. And this is really a matter of preference. If I was new to the scroll saw, I would probably just cut out the whole shape of this hoodie, for example. But since I'm a little more practiced and I feel comfortable, I can add in more details. So I'm gonna be cutting the hood out separately and maybe even this little shadow part just to give it some added depth and definition. Even if you wanna cut out the shapes large and not worry about small details, there's a lot of detail that you can add later on with the Dremel. I will be doing that as well, especially on the hair, and I'll show you that at the end. But for now, just so there's clarity for me when I go down to the scroll saw, I'm gonna be taking a pencil and then maybe a color that I can see, such as a white gel pen, and I'm gonna trace the lines that I want to cut out once I'm at the saw. Again, the white lines are just there to help me clarify which pieces I'm actually gonna cut out and separate once I'm at the saw, and which pieces I'm gonna to leave together and do later with my Dremel. Step three is to attach your template onto your material. I'm using quarter inch MDF. One option to create more dimension in your piece is a stack cut so you have thicker and thinner layers. But for this particular piece, I'm using one sheet of material. I also like to briefly color the back side of the MDF to make sure that I sand and finish the correct side later on. The second copy of my picture is going to lay on a scrap piece of MDF and will help me keep all my pieces organized when I start scrolling. Step four, now it's time to hit the scroll saw. Using a smaller blade is important if you're cutting a lot of details. The reason being is that the smaller the blade, the smaller the trace, meaning the thinner the line and less amount of material is going to be taken away. With small puzzle pieces like this, a smaller blade makes all the pieces fit back together without gaps. Though I recommend a number three, today I'm actually using a number five modified geometry blade from Pegasus simply because I was out of threes. I'm not too worried about using a bigger blade because I know if I hand paint the pieces at the end, it'll make my pieces just a little bit bigger and fill in that extra gap. You'll see that in reality, I'm actually scrolling at a pretty slow pace and I'm taking my time around those turns and making sure I'm not driving while I turn my piece. And again, with every small piece that I cut out, I instantly move it over to the second copy of my template just to make sure it doesn't get lost. All right, so I brought all my cutout pieces over here and it's time to shape them. I'm gonna be using my Dremel and some Dremel engraving tools. I like to use this itty bitty engraving one for details I'm about to do on the hair. I'll also be using my drum sander and the disc sander piece. All right, so I shaped all my pieces. I found that I really favor my disc sander to make all of those creases and all of the wave details. So now I'm gonna go to painting and I'm gonna start with the primer. This is something you can do with spray paints. If you prefer to spray paint your primer, I would recommend laying all your pieces on a double-sided tape or a sticky tape so it doesn't blow away and then you could spray the primer on. Today I'm just hand painting because that's what I have in stock right now. So I'm gonna do the base layer with a white primer, let it dry, and then we'll move to the acrylics. Now that I'm all primed, it's time to start with the painting and I have an assortment of acrylics. I like to do this methodically, so I, I'm gonna start with all of the skin tones. So I take one piece at a time and I give it a light sand on my micro zip. I just want the base to be really smooth before the top coat goes on. I'm gonna mix my colors and we'll get started. Yeah. 
And once you're finished painting, it's really important to give it a good top coat. Today I'm using Rust-Oleum's clear durable top coat that will protect the paint and keep it from getting ruined. Okay, so here it is all painted and pieced together. I went ahead and glued the pieces together using this Glue Masters Super Glue. It's one of my favorites, I'll put it in the description. I went ahead and glued the pieces together before putting it down just to make it easier to center. Of course, that's optional. If you just wanna glue piece by piece right onto your backer, you could do that too. Also, if you wanna know how to make this backing or how to make the frame, I'll stick some cards up for you at the top. So to apply it, I'm just gonna use this tight bond wood glue and of course, some of the super glue again to clamp it down and kind of to reinforce. So that's it you guys. Portraits are such a fun scroll solve project and I hope this gives you the inspiration to make your own. Happy scrolling!